What's up, everybody? It's the Brown Water Banter Podcast. I am Jared Seymour. I'm Joey Cates. And we're here today with Bill from the Harrison County Development Commission. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Bill reached out to us uh, through LinkedIn. Uh, yep. We've been putting some content out on LinkedIn, and uh, he shot us a message and said he wanted to come in and talk, and I'm super excited about it. Yep. Uh, we're chatting a little bit before we got started, and Joey, as we've mentioned before on the podcast, does the uh, the Votec program at Harrison uh, at, at Harrison County Schools. That's right, yeah. Harrison County Schools. That's it's, right. It's not Votech anymore. It's CTE. That's what, the yeah, new name. What's that stand for? Career Technical Education. I, I like that though, yeah. um, and that's a, kind of a hot topic in the news. I mean, what's the value of a, a college degree? It's definitely expensive. Or people that you know, not for, it's not for everybody always. Um, and that's what we're going to get into here today. Um, if you could explain to us the uh, what, what's what's your background here with the Harrison County Development Commission? What, how long? y'all been around like what, what do y'all do so we were founded 62 years ago by some visionaries that decided that we needed economic development in harrison county and they cut the actual seaway um, that's now seaway road where a lot of the blue economy takes place so there was a news story last week where usm and lidos are building the uh, uh, sea hunter 2 which is an autonomous uh, ship that's being built right here okay the only one that exists in the world was built right here and number two is being built right now so those guys usually kind of hide but they were in the news last week so we're proud that they're talking more about what they do uh -huh. um so in doing that we have the industrial park bayou bernard industrial park in gulfport we have the long beach industrial park in long beach we have uh the north harrison industrial park in Socher, and and then we we dabble in anything kind of in more industrial than retail or hospitality right uh, but that's that's what our focus is and then we also serve we, we have a lot of things that we do that a lot of people don't you know say economic development that means one thing to a lot of people but we do a lot more than that so we in in those parks Gulfport and Long Beach we also manage 400 water and sewer customers so we have a full utility crew we take care of you know, if, if water, there's a water quality issue, we take care of that. If there's a sewer issue, my rule is I don't want to see any pictures and just fix it. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, a good rule. That's yeah. a good rule. Yeah, well, just tell us it's bad. Don't, well, yeah. don't show us. When you say y'all you, you, are in charge of these industrial parks, is it your job to bring these businesses in here? Or is it to keep, obviously, keep them happy once they're here as well? Is yes. It, okay. Do so you, so we, do, we do business retention and, and help the existing businesses grow because – nationally about 70 percent of the business that's done in the country is done by existing business so it's really hard to go get somebody it shouldn't be right. hard to get somebody in illinois to move to mississippi especially when they're shoveling snow absolutely yeah but in the real world it's not that easy to get somebody to just pull up and and move or even do a second location so so we spend a lot of our time focusing on taking care of the customers that are already here mm -hmm. that have been paying taxes that are employing people and then we still do we still do recruit and um but my favorite thing is the little guy that's why i reached out to y'all i really yeah. appreciate what y'all are doing to help get the word out about all the variety of things that are happening along the coast yeah it's not just beer and fishing no um, no that's so a big part I'm, of it might yeah. be a little yeah, bit boring yeah, yeah, yeah. compared to some no, of your no, other no, 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 we no, take it all that's what i was telling you before we recorded we've done i've had multiple uh, we had small business owners in here we've talked we've talked like i said uh, last episode was uh, um or one of our previous episodes a lady talked about losing her husband to cancer so yeah, we're, well, yeah. i want to highlight everybody and yeah. everything that's yeah. around here so there's a lot of really in cool cool stuff that most people in the community don't know about or yeah. they drive by all the time and they take for granted that's exactly right you mentioned about getting businesses to come here to to the state uh, to mississippi south mississippi specifically um i've heard other business guys talk about that before you would think that mississippi we have a low cost of living mm -hmm. right we have we have good weather compared to like you said the the north that's snow, snow. shoveling snow i mean yeah. it's hot as hell down here in the yeah. summertime but you can deal with that right yeah. but there but people don't know about us is there a lot of legal red tape to starting a new business or you know what what's what is a barrier there that you see i think some of it's perception okay um a lot uh, of it definitely is, with our state yeah we're all hillbillies yeah yeah hillbilly and rednecks no, you know, not a trained workforce and yeah yeah but then when when over and over again i mean we've had seven different countries come with their ambassadors we we hosted an ambassador reception last year through the state department 
at the Beau Rivage with like 37 ambassadors. And the worst thing that we can do when we bring somebody to the coast is bring them to a convention center, put them in a room with no windows for yeah. three days and talk yeah. and, and watch a bunch of PowerPoints. Right. So the State Department saw that and took them out to people's houses for dinner. So cool. the best thing we can do, we just met with some people last week. There's a CTE conference coming to the coast yeah. July 24th through the 29th. We met with the ladies that are the, you know, leading that charge. Right. I said, y'all need to come on Tuesday night or Wednesday night, pick a night during the conference, come to Howard Avenue. Yeah. See yeah. what's going on. See the revitalizations that are taking place. Throw an ax. Yep. Go to some <laughs> of the, you know, the, the um, I just said it, the Threaded Cork. Yes. Uh, right. That's one of my employees' wives that owns that store. So she's going to kind of be the ringleader of coordinating that for those teachers that are from all over the state because the yeah. best thing we can do is bring people down here and turn them into cheerleaders for us when they go back home right. that's right wherever they're from we just was at the uh the skull axe throwing yeah. uh friday night yeah. uh the uh, Bluxy bay area chamber of commerce had um a poker run just designed to do the same thing to get yeah. people down here to howard yeah. avenue yeah. and come check out all these businesses yeah. so it, it was a good event had a good turnout we had a good time that conference is usually in jackson it's every summer we go to it and in the middle of jackson in yeah. summer it's nothing but concrete buildings and torn yeah. up roads so yeah. to bring it back down here to where we're looking at the beach the entire time we check stuff out like here a, is a, awesome a brown water uh crawfish boil with these people when you bring these delegates yeah. in and, and cool. show them like yeah. you know well, some southern cuisine the ladies came to us uh thursday sherry beavis at secretary of state's office set all that up and they wanted to basically go on some small business tours on Friday, the last day of the conference before everybody goes home. So uh -huh. they came to us and said, what are some really unique small businesses that we can take the teachers to so that they can be more educated about, you know, the technology and some other things. So we picked a few of them that we're reaching out to, to, to coordinate all that. And then in that meeting, I was like, well, don't just come and stay in the hotel right Get go out. look at what's well, look what yeah. what's happening on howard avenue that's a great example for everybody because there's a lot of variety just right here in this one block right of business and industry and revitalization and, and they thought it was a great idea they Absolutely. haven't even scratched the surface of the potential down here yeah i mean yeah. you know katrina has been 2005 ago so it still you know has left its marks here um, but you know, we coming back. Yeah, the mayor yeah. of Fufo Gillich has made it a priority yep. to try to get this area going again. So kudos to him. Yep. Um, and I think it's the first small wave of that has already implemented in the, in the businesses that you do see here. Um, so I hope the the push continues. Yeah, you know, um, how does how does your job and what you do? Um, is it like overlay into what you and Joey were talking about right before we started uh, recording with the with the CTE? Am I saying that right again, yeah, Joey? CTE. How, how, do the schools come to you? How does well, that work? So that's one of the most important things that I think that yeah. we do that it, I'm it a, sounds, that I'm passionate. It sounds about. great. So what I've I've had interns in the summer through the school year. I'm you, to start. I've I've been here th since November of 2017. I was in a I was a bank president in in Alabama for two different banks. I got into economic development. I was fixing a broken shopping center in Gulf, in uh, Gulf Shores during a little event called Deepwater Horizon. Oh, yeah. man. Um, Remember that? Yeah. And so we 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 recruited BP to our shopping center, and then I got into economic development after that. My wife said we were exiled in Texas for seven years, <laughs> in the in West Texas. So I did yeah. a little deal um, with Amazon. Uh, we did an Amazon wind farm, and I did I did about 34 deals and about a billion dollars in in uh, revenue. Okay, tax Sweet. revenue. Yeah. when I was out there, my daughter you wanted went to all go over the place doing different stuff. I, I like have, that. I yeah, have. and um, anyway, my my daughter decided she wanted to go to an SEC school. She picked Ole Miss. We felt like, man, we got to get back in the South. We got to get out of Texas. So. I was lucky to get this job two years, two and a half years ago. Right. But I brought some of the ideas that I've done other places here. So one of the most important things is the students okay. that yeah. we have that you teach. And thank thank you and all the teachers. My wife's a third grade teacher. Okay. Y'all don't get paid enough. You don't get talked about enough. Yeah. We have discounts for first responders. We have discounts for, you know, police, fire. They're awesome people. But if there weren't teachers right. teaching those people to read those tests that they then pass to become paramedics and firefighters and policemen, we wouldn't have them. That's right. right. So I think there needs to be more credit given to the teachers 
um, for what they do and the hours they work and the passion that they pour into these students. So along that vein, my most important committee is workforce development. So we sit down with What's the bus driver's name in D'Iverville? Uh, Miss Gracie King. Yeah, I'm horrible with names. Yeah, I, I mess them up too. But we sit down with all the school districts in Harrison County about every quarter. Our meeting's coming up in a couple of weeks. This is a program inside of the, the Development, Development Commission. Commission. Okay, so I like that. We started with that. We started with three kids in our office that fly drones and do social media and all the stuff we don't know how to do podcasts. Yeah, yeah we yeah. haven't done that yet. Okay, but, call um, us. Yeah, we, we know guys. We'll come talk so to you. we. Um, <laughs> So we, so we started these interns, and then we said we've got to do more than what we're just doing in our office. So we got a grant through the State Workforce Investment Board. Instead of going, and, and all our kids now are getting tested. The legislature just passed the ACT Workforce Work Keys testing, mm -hmm. yeah. paid for by the state. All the rest of the state was taking the SWIB money and putting it in testing. We took that money and said, we want to pay kids to go basically test drive to drive. So it's called C-Force. Yes. We got some cups Skills, yeah. Yeah. experience, well we and adventure. There it is. Okay. So we've branded it, and the kids get a T-shirt, and we're going to have a banquet for the kids and the, and the businesses and the uh, parents coming up in April and to celebrate this program. So we have 27 students that are working from all the schools in Harrison County, in different businesses but the what the the difference in this is the student says i think i want to be an engineer so pickering engineering around the corner right has caleb okay caleb comes in i thought he was with the engineering group he comes in he's dressed in a suit he's like game on mm -hmm. yeah. i didn't know he's a high school senior coming to his first interview okay knocked it out pickering loves him one of my proudest things that i do every week when i sign checks and I don't know if Lori's doing it on purpose, but the first like 15 checks or 20 checks that mm -hmm. I sign in the stack mm -hmm. are kids. That's cool. Caleb, Peyton, so all these other pay kids. To do this. Yeah. 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 So we pay minimum wage. A lot of these kids have never had a job before. Right. But they're doing what they think they want to do because there have been too many stories that I've yeah. run into where you go get an accounting degree and you hate accounting. Well, then why are you an accountant? Yeah. Be, you know, that's just because it's the cool thing to do. Yeah. Go get it. Or degree. somebody told you yeah. or something like that. Like I, that's been one of my biggest complaints, you know, having gone through a lot of school myself and you look back and you're like, man, I just wish in high school there would have been a way to, right. to, to go and taste a little bit of these things or whatever. And if you, especially if you're a kid and you, you don't know these business owners, right? Yeah. That can yeah. be hard to do. Like yeah. if your parents not connected to that industry, that'd be difficult. So that sounds like a great program. I mean, so we, and, and the, the cool thing for us, and this is a, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Right. So Chris Crichton at JW Puckett Construction, mm -hmm. I called Chris and I said, hey, will you take a couple of interns? He's like, man, I, you know, I don't know. We're a construction company. Right. And I was like, well, just play along. So we sent him a couple of resumes and he's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we want to talk to these kids. There's right. one from Gulfport and one from Long Beach. Jessica, and I don't know every kid's name. I right. should, right. but I'm horrible with names. <laughs> so Jessica's won six math math contests. Okay. She's scary smart. No. So I called Chris. I said, look, I'm just trying to increase your intellectual level there at the office. You know? so <laughs> She's his, probably smarter than young. Right, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. So Steve has a student that's a sophomore in high school. They okay. interview these kids, and they're like, these aren't your normal kids. Yeah, we're going to take them both. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jessica, in her interview, high school senior, says, well, you know, I really want to go into aeronautical engineering but this would be a good place for me to learn about business and my soft skills. And Chris says, what do you say to that? Other than yeah, that? really. When do you Come start? There's a high school yeah. kid saying yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so there are those kids. But then we've also got to get to the other kids that don't have that mentor, that don't have that opportunity to go to college, that don't want to be an aerospace engineer, right. that just right. want to be a, you know, if you want to be a truck driver, that's awesome. We yeah. need those. If you yeah. want to be a yeah. plumber, an electrician, Guess what? Those yeah, guys are making more. good money yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in high demand. Yeah. They're so so we want to make those connections. So the business, here's what's happening. The business is saying, wow, I didn't know we had these kind of kids in our neighborhood. Right. The kids are saying, wow, I didn't know we had this kind of business in our neighborhood. So we're cross-connecting our we're own in. people. And hopefully, if Jessica decides to be an aerospace engineer, 
maybe we'll by then have recruited an aerospace company and she can come back home. That's right. Because we don't want everybody to think they have to go to Atlanta or the big cities to, to get a good job. And by exposing the kids to what's in their backyard and exposing the businesses to the talent that's in our backyard, everybody wins. Well, and you can, you can then take what you, what the product that you're talking about right now and show these to potential businesses to come into the state. Right. right. My favorite product is people. Right. Yes. So, we took our product, Jacoby and Jaden. Mm-hmm. Jaden is now a freshman at Mississippi State University. He flew um, drone missions for us. I found him in the hall in Gulfport High School because two of the girls that I were interviewing didn't know how to fly drones. They said I needed to go find Jaden. So I went and found him, hired him, and he did 80 drone missions before he left to go to college. Right. Okay. He goes to college, applies for an internship, sends me an email, says, Hey, Mr. Bill, remember I was getting that internship? Well, that one led to this one. I'm editing the film on the sideline football for ESPN wow. Oh, wow. as a freshman in college. And Jacoby, that, so Jaden gives a speech at the Rotary Club. Jacoby's a kid that created the Gulfport High School app. He's a coder. When we got him, he wouldn't look you in the eye, and he'd shake yeah. when you start yeah. talking to him about doing stuff in public. I made him speak at the Rotary Club. <laughs> With Jaden. Jaden coached him. And I said, you guys are giving the speech. I'm there for backup. Jacoby, if you get scared, all you got to do is start talking about coding. Nobody will know what you're talking about anyway. <laughs> you can make it all up. Ones and zeros. Yeah. In that crowd was Monty Graham from USM. After Jacoby and Jaden spoke, not me, he said, how do I get some kids like that? I said, how many do you want? He <laughs> said, five. So they've created their own CTE STEM blue economy team that focuses on autonomous drone and science and water and a yeah, whole bunch of stuff cool. i don't even know how to say oceanography right so they took 25 resumes from gulfport high school narrowed it down to five picked their dream team and usm is paying for those kids so uh-huh. i've got 27 kids deployed through my grant plus five and i want 300 which brandy in my office manages the herding of the cats with kids schedules and businesses and she doesn't like it when i say that but (laughs) i want to get as many kids exposed to what they think they want to do before they have to do and do what you want to do do what you're passionate about not what you have to do for a living that makes all the difference in the world nobody did that for me or Uh, you or you it didn't work out that way when we were in school so now these kids have an opportunity to really do that so so we talked a lot about the kids, right? But the other real side of this story is we have a lot of people in the military, good folks. Now, if you're if you're from Chicago and you want to go back home because you miss pizza, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But if you want to stay on the Gulf Coast, I want to help you try to find a place to stay. Go to Tom's Pe- Pizzeria because yeah, pretty- you don't <laughs> and you don't want to you don't want to necessarily sit at home and when you're retired and you're forty something years old, right? So. Let's let's connect with the businesses just like we do with the students and try to find you a place to plug in if you love the coast and you love to drink beer and you love to fish right and you love to work let's keep you here yeah mm-hmm. so we have a really talented workforce and the businesses doesn't matter businesses don't care where the people came from or go to school they want good people and yeah. they don't necessarily have to be fully trained and know everything under the sun yeah. uh, joey's mentioned before when you talked about the program that you do he does a program uh through the school right with uh, was it in pascagoula right Joey? yeah it's, with we, we do it at ingles he said the most important thing is getting somebody to show up just on show, up to just show up to show up you know skills. that's 90 yeah. percent of the problem is just show, show up, up every day drug test right? yeah and you get you, people coming out of the military Dude, they they got to do that program anyways. to do yeah. that. That's you know? right. Yeah. So that's right. so the businesses that's that's our kind of our um, when we when we do talk to people that aren't from here, mm-hmm. and we're conveying that that difference. That's what we really focus on. Is look what Keesler does. Look what the CBs do. Look look what we have here that a lot of communities don't have. Right. right. Coast Guard. I mean, we we have we have assets here that most people don't have any idea that we have. That's right. The the, um, Commander Whitmire at the CB base gets really annoyed when people tell him what's a CB. When, you know, when he's, and and he's very, he's as passionate as I am about trying to find these guys and ladies employment if they want to stay on the coast. Once they're done. Because if we, if we, if we prove that this is a great place to live and work, which we all know, and that's what your podcast is all about, then 
why do you have to leave? Yeah, do what right. you love. Stay here in the environment that you like. Don't shovel snow. Mm -hmm. And 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 we're doing really, really. I mean, we've got guys and ladies that build the nose cone for the the submarines at Seaman Composites on that seaway that I talked about. That the visionaries. I didn't built. know we did that out there. Yeah, I knew forty there feet wide, thirty five feet tall. It's like Santa's workshop. Everything that goes <laughs> in there is not a part that you can get anywhere else. They create it. And the pride that they create for what they do and who they do it for is you can't measure it. Yeah. And every employee loves working there. And then we've got you go down the street mm -hmm. and you got US Marine, they're building the, the boats for the SEALs. And that's about all I can say about that. But uh. they're really proud about what they do. Then you got US Marine partnering with Lidos and they're building an autonomous ship. Yeah. That nobody else in the world has so you take all that and then you go you know i'm going to go outside of my my norm for a minute but you go to jackson county you got ingles you got chevron mm -hmm. you go to hancock county if you're going to go to mars you got to go through hancock that's, county that's right that's so right. that's right you take all that it's crazy and most people don't think about us they don't yeah they so don't we think. have to box our way into the ring and then fight to, to try to convince them that this is a great place. So we spend about 10% of our time chasing the big shiny stuff mm -hmm. that may or may not want to come here. And 90% of our time when we're not doing all these other things, focusing on the people that are already here that are doing awesome, cool things. Yeah. yeah I mean, I didn't realize that until you just now said either. that, yeah. that, that we were doing that kind of and stuff. And it's, out you there. know, they're in nondescript metal buildings that most yep. people that just drive by had no idea that's going on right. in there. That's right. And those companies are expanding. Those companies are hiring. And, and there's, there's, you know, manufacturing today is not manufacturing of old. Right. It doesn't smell bad. Right. It's not really very dirty. It's most of the time it's air conditioned. It's mm -hmm. and and what we're finding is, and what that's the reason we do a lot of this stuff with the kids is people want hands on. They yeah. want hands on the kids. They can do anything you want on a computer or a phone because they grew up with it. But when they right. can create something and do something with their hands, mm -hmm. they love that even more. Yeah. And that gives them that pride. And then and they get a paycheck and they're happy and they're they're really enjoying what they do then that 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 overcomes turnover yep you know if you're happy where you are you're not going to leave for 50 cents an hour right you know we, we we solve a lot of problems going back to the basics so this whole thing that i've been talking about with these kids mm -hmm. guess how much money i've spent on that in the last 40 days like you're talking about your payroll budget yeah for these kids i don't know 5,800 bucks. Wow. So it's not 10 grand. It's not a million dollars. It's yeah. not. Right. It's, it's grassroots. Put the money on the street with the kids. Now the kids, they get a job to put on their resume yeah. when they go to college or whatever they're going to do next. I you know, and they've amazing. got a reference, not only from me, but from that business. Right. And we're going to do a video series of the kids saying what they've learned and the businesses saying what they've learned it sounds like a win like all the all way, around. way around yeah, yeah. and know, it is what needs to be done yeah i mean you're the first person i've ever heard talk about this i'm gonna be honest i yeah. mean let uh, I me mean, excuse me doing this i mean i've yeah. heard people mention things it's, like this but this seems like it's it's already implemented and it's very well thought out well we we created it on purpose yeah because it's that important that's the difference when when i get the big shiny deal mm -hmm. and they come to town and i say how many whatever's do you need Right. Because we can get you those coming out of high school and program them your way. Right. Or we can get them coming out of the military. You just tell me how many you need. Because we know there are 40 seamen separating from the CB base this month. Some of them are going home. Some of them want to stay here. Right. So how do we connect those guys? And in Mississippi, when you retire in the military, it's one of five states where you're not taxed for your retirement income. I didn't know that. So you don't have to make as much money coming out and you're skilled in electrical plumbing you know if you're a cb you do a lot of crazy stuff yeah. and now you get to come out to the real world and right. not get shot at while you're doing that <laughs> you know so we, we need to really thank those men and women that really protect us every day that we take for granted right because we take for granted a lot of things right in, underneath our feet every day as yeah. you drive by the cb base and you drive by keesler be thankful yeah. that they're here. 
Yep. Keys we to- we take it. We've done a couple of field trips out there to the, the yeah. helicopters and all that yeah. stuff. Man, it's amazing. Those, you those you get the guys, kids walking through there and they're like, "Oh my god!" I mean, they're putting a like it's like a Lego set of a helicopter. Yeah. They're putting it together right there, and the kids getting in the cockpit. And they're there. I mean, the kids' eyes are this big. Around. Yeah. You know Taz MG is like insane. How talented those guys are and yeah. what they do, and because that's eight states that they supply for the National Guard. They My cousin the, works out there. Jonathan yeah. works out there. Does he? Yeah. That's crazy, cool. crazy skilled people. And just uh, another great asset that everybody drives by every day and has no idea what's right. going on in yeah. that big, shiny building. Yeah. I think connecting the kids like you're talking about, though, and, and even if it's a situation where they go out and they're like, hey, I thought I liked this, and I don't. Well, yeah. And you know what? You just saved – what thirty thousand dollars yeah. for that kid yeah. who didn't get that degree exactly. and then go into yeah. the job and go oh man and that's this part is of the rules the kid it's a two-way street and we just had this happen last week i won't mention the business but they had two interns right it's not chris it's another business and and i'd i'd stop them at the biloxi at fofo's speech a couple of weeks ago and i said hey how's the intern going she said oh they're awesome i wish i could have 20 mm-hmm. but i don't have that much work yeah so um and I said, will you come to my commission meeting and tell my commissioners? Because a lot of times when I tell them stuff, I'm like Charlie Brown's teacher because, you know, I get really excited and amped up about stuff. Anyway, she said, yeah, I'd be glad to. She said, my my student has already had her first. Um, it's a magazine. I'll go ahead and say it. It's yeah. South, Liv- South Mississippi Living Magazine. Okay. Kelsey Sutherland is who I'm talking about. Okay. So um, one of her students has already published their first article which is a huge thing yeah. Yeah. for a journalism yeah. student yeah the the article is posted in the in the classroom at the high school there are like eight kids that are now wanting to go and work for kelsey because of what this one Kid student did. has come back and yeah. talked about kelsey's gone to the classroom to talk to the kids and kelsey's is excited about it as you know i just asked a simple question and kelsey's getting really excited talking about it yeah same deal. Kelsey's got another student who's, who's, there was a question about whether she was wanting to participate as much. She sends an email kind of as a guidance of, you know, I don't see her. She's meeting the deadline. She's doing good work. I just want to make sure she's happy. Well, because she reached out, there was some clarification, some communication that needed to take place mm-hmm. so that everybody was feeling good about the experience. Right. It's a two-way street. If this, and I tell the students and the businesses, if Chris, if you don't like Jessica, you got to tell me. Jessica, if you don't like Chris, you, you got to tell me. me. Yeah. And then if you don't like what you're doing, come back and we'll find you something else to do. That's yeah. cool. That's valuable. Yeah. That's super valuable. And I, at these kids, uh, it's adults too, man. Like you got to, you got to learn that that's how the world works. Like yeah. you said, that one kid gave that speech who was way out of his comfort zone, yeah. right? Yeah. He goes in there, talks, and then boom, 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 a couple of things transpire. And now he's, you know, doing other things because of that. That's well, how the world works. We yeah. took Jacoby and this was at Christmas. You know, he wouldn't look you in the eye and he'd shake and stuff. And Fridays he comes to us cause he's a dual credit kid. And so we only get him one day a week. Right. But he did, he's done, um, the kids did the coastalrelocation.org website, which we'll talk about in a minute. Jacoby did the seaforcems.org. He did that whole website. He built it. He coded it. Really? I took the pictures. He cut my head off and all the, you know, <laughs> you can't figure out how to get it where, you know, because I'm a little taller than yeah. some people. But I was like, dude, can you get it so where I'm, my head's not cut off? On all? Well, I'll try. He was like, like, oh, it was an accident. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's payback. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, but he... um at Christmas time, I was like, oh, great, man. You're going to be out of school. We get to see you every day. And he's like, no, I'm not coming back till January. And I was like, are you kid?" He goes, no, I'll be back January 4th. And I was like, you're serious? And he said, yes. That was like a thousand percent different than the Jacoby we right. met in April last year when we first interviewed him. And I was like, well, thank you for being so, you know, independent and yeah. you know, I kind of didn't like it but right. you know he was, hey, he was on break yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's I'm out of here man yeah. you know yeah. but but that's that's what we're trying to do um and and it's fun it's fun for us it's fun for the businesses it, it you know for the little bit of money that we spend yeah, investing in these yeah. students it's going to pay dividends for a long time. Yep, no doubt. I, I agree with that. I think you got kids out there too. You, you know, you, you're naming one who maybe wasn't good at talking and looking yeah. people in the eye and all that stuff. But 
Um, you give kids a purpose, and I think you see your depressed kids or your maybe yeah. violent kids that act out because yeah. of that. They don't feel they have a purpose or home life or being you attention. Know, you can. I think what y'all are doing like that, man, that can really change lives and turn people around yeah. before hopefully they either you know make bad yeah. life decisions. You know what I mean? We had a kid, and so going back to Texas for a minute, we we I had a buddy that ran a shop. We we're a town of eleven thousand people, and. He couldn't ever find good mechanics. So I said, all right, open your shop Tuesday night. You're going to build a car with a bunch of kids. Said, no, I'm not. Why would I do that? Who's kids? I get Rob blind, man. Do you know how many tools I have in here? Yeah. What time are we going to do it? I don't know. Six to eight Tuesday nights. Your shop, you tell me. So I made the mistake of giving the idea to the middle school principal. So he put a flyer up on the, on the, in the hallway and mm -hmm. said, if you want to build a hot rod, come to the come to the um auditorium about a meeting well, there are 150 kids in that school 75 came to the auditorium oh, man. if he would put a flyer up on the wall that said if you want to be a mechanic right. nobody, nobody would have shown up that's yeah. right so 75 kids show up we have an open house at the shop and 12 kids come with their parents so we were going to do four these are sixth seventh and eighth graders right so Robbie interview we make them fill out a job application make them go through an interview these are middle school kids they've never yeah. done anything like that but man that's we valuable had, you know, yeah. we, we had to create a job application we had to you know so Robbie calls me and says man I got a problem I said what he said I gotta hire all 12 I said okay we'll find some more dads so those kids those are kind of the middle kids that I was talking about earlier right right I was on a radio talking about my mayor and some things we were working on and the lady dj said let's talk about that's called project frankenstein uh, she said let's talk about that because james is my son i said skinny jeans is your son <laughs> skinny jeans had hoop earrings wore skinny jeans right didn't fit in in west texas right he wasn't wearing cowboy boots and big buckles always in trouble at school for his earrings and different things when he got in that program his grades went up. Mm -hmm. His mom was a single mom, had no idea that that, that, that was going to transform her child in that environment. That's right. Yeah. Skinny Jeans was the best welder that had ever come through that shop. Yep. Those kids have built five cars and two motorcycles. Those kids got to go to the biggest car show in Texas, and I made, I made grown men cry talking about the kids, and they were giving me $100 bills because they thought we were from Dallas. They had no idea we were doing that in a little time. I did that with $25,000. And we, we've had kids that have now gone on to trade school. We've had none of the kids dropped out. Um, and it's, it's, you've got to invest in our future, and it's not all on a phone and a computer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're right. And it's, t it's tactile form, like you mentioned. Right? And we did in that, in that deal, and I still want to do that. I talked to Clay Jones about it when I first got here. Um, I want to find a shop that wants to do something like that mm -hmm. because what we did was the kids, it wasn't just turning the wrenches. They came for that, but they had to buy parts. They had to do accounting. They had to go talk to adults about what they did. They had to take the car to car shows. They won seven first place tr trophies with that car. Well, because there was nobody else in their age category, right. you know, <laughs> they took the car. The first thing we did was a 62 Ford truck. They took it Sweet. to the high school career uh, fair where the firemen and everybody's there at the college. Right. They had a bigger crowd right around them than anybody else. Yeah. And they were middle school kids. Yeah. That's and it, awesome. it transformed those kids. Oh, and, awesome. and, and a lot of them were ones that had never had an opportunity like they'd never left the county before. They'd never been to Dallas. If anybody's uh, listening and you own a shop or you know someone who owns yep. a shop, let them know. Tag yeah. them in the comments below on this video yeah. or shoot us a message through Facebook or let us know because that'd be great to get something rolling like yeah, that. Cool. Well, I met, I met the shop teacher or I don't know, I guess, I don't know what you call it. Not What's shop. That? The guy that you said his name. He's an old race car driver. He actually beat Dale oh, Earnhardt. Oh, Mr. Parker? Yeah. yeah. At, and I want to create a racing team. I want to create, I want to raise some money and have the kids build a race car if you're into that right and have mr pa he's already got a car he's got a trailer he just doesn't that's have all he does is race they yeah. race all the time yeah. they mostly dirt track and yeah. he when i walked into his classroom 
which is a it's not a classroom. He has a full on machine shop. Yeah, he does like, it all. Like a lot of businesses don't have. Yeah. And to have that guy in there teaching those kids what he's teaching them, mm-hmm. that's why the teachers are un you know not recognized to yeah. the level that they need to be. Yeah. Because the passion that he's pouring into those kids and you pour into those kids every day doesn't get measured in a paycheck. That's right. And we've got to get more of those kids doing, I mean, you can make a whole lot more money being a plumber than you can being an attorney. No doubt. Yeah. Especially if you learn some business sense behind you and turn it into a business. You know what I mean? I know they've done it with allied health a lot. We see, I work in the hospital, so we see people come through uh, that want to be anything involved in healthcare. Um, But to see it being done now in all these other different genres or, you know, uh, career opportunities, I think. That's that's just amazing. I know St. Martin, I think, uh, does a thing where they build uh, robots, like yeah. some little, and then they kind of fight them or race them or something yeah. like that. Um, that's a STEM class. Right. Most right. of them, most of the high schools have a STEM class. Yeah. And then other than, like our career technical place, I mean, they, they, I mean, our career technical center, They, I mean, my wife teaches at Teacher Academy, so that's the teachers who mm-hmm. want to be teachers. They have, um, uh, they have a nurse, Keen, over there who yeah. teaches yep. um uh, people who want to be nurses yeah. and you got, you know, coach Parker and all that. And there's a, a carpentry shop over there. There's a welding shop over there. So it's, it, it reaches all, all so, kinds of people. So another, you know, one of the, we have shortcomings in a lot of industries, mm-hmm. plumbers, electricians, mechanics. So Taz MG, a lot of those guys, when they retire, where are they going to go? I want them to go across the airport because at millionaire we're short on AMP mechanics. So you take a kid that's working at the STEM class up there at Harrison Central. Yeah. They did a really cool, like, 72 white Chevy pickup and built it for cruising the coast. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that get I'm a car guy, so yeah. that gets yeah. my wheels turning, yeah. you know. But you take one of those kids and say, hey, instead of making $40 an hour, you can make $80 an hour going over here working on airplanes. It's still a compression engine. Right. It's going to transfer know, a lot. You can be the best pilot in the world, but if you have a bad mechanic, you're going to have a bad day. That's right. So, and we need more pilots. That's right. So we've got, we've got those opportunities right in our backyard. So how do we connect those kids that think they want to do, or don't even know that they want to do that? Mm-hmm. Don't even, hadn't that's have, the part I like. That's the problem. That's know? the part I like that don't know. Because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of kids that don't know, man. Well, I mean, I didn't when I was that yeah, age. I you were just know. funneled to go to college. Yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, that's right. What, what, am, I, what am I going to do in how college? Much different I don't know what these, I want to do. How much different can these kids' lives be because they went to your program and it was like, I didn't know this thing existed. Right. I did it, and boom, now here I go. And then you call, you know, for me, I call a business like Chris, and we've got several of them, and I'll call them and I'll say, look, um, will you take an intern? Well, you know, I don't know. What, what do you mean? Just like Robbie. Right. Well, I'm going to send you a kid. I'm going to pay for him. It's free labor to you, and they can do social media. They can do all these things that you don't know how to do or don't want to do. And wait a second. I can get a kid that I'm not paying for? And what, why would I do that? Well, because you're giving them a chance to expose them to your business and hopefully be a mentor for them mm-hmm. and teach them about, you know, we, we get questions a lot. Like we've got kids at Caldwell Banker. Well how, well, how do we handle them? Well, handle them like they're your kids. Yeah. yeah. You know, treat them. But the thing about these kids, they listen to you. Because yeah. I have kids. Yeah. Mine don't yeah, always yeah. listen. No. These do. Yeah. Except for Jacoby when he stood up to me that time. But, you know. <laughs> still still got him they, on they listen. They listen more than our own kids. So it's like, you know, when you coach kids, like I could never coach my son. Mm-hmm. But I could coach everybody else's kids because yeah. they'd listen to me. That's right. So this is another one of those coaching mentor opportunities. And, and there are a lot of businesses. You know, Robbie, who's still out in West Texas, he got more out of those kids. I get more out of the kids than I think they get out of me. Yep. And that, you know, it just – everybody gets excited. You yeah. know, when you see when you see Jacoby give that speech mm-hmm. – or you get that email from from Jaden where he got to do what he loves to do for ESPN right. that he never dreamed he'd be able to do, you know yeah. that you're like, oh yeah. And right. my wife gets mad at me because she's like, well, why don't you do that with our son? I said I've tried, but yeah. he doesn't listen. Different dynamic. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Exa- I have kids too. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking yeah. about. If people that are that are listening to this or watching this. Can they, if they're in, it's, I'm assuming it's got to be in Harrison County, right? Can yeah. they volunteer their kid or push their kid, well, what, request the, their kid be a part of this? The way we do that is we go back through our partners at the schools. So we, we, we 
we want them to contact the counselor the cte teacher you know you know who those kids are better than i ever will that may need a step up that may want you know that may need this opportunity that's that's where we're headed next is is you know we've got kids that are going to college full rides 34 acts that's great but we've got to get to that middle layer of the of the kids that don't have those same opportunities and so they can contact me or brandy brandy i do all the talking brandy does all the work (laughs) um but (laughs) but it's about making those connections about um through the school vetting the student making sure they're a good fit because the school doesn't want to send uh, a student that's not going to make it right and the business right, doesn't right. want to invest their time you know right. and so we have to we, we we work together to accomplish that and and uh gracie yeah miss gracie we did a deal two years ago when i got here we called it mentor match so we had 12 kids on a thursday night and 12 businesses come and we were gonna we were gonna you know okay you want to be an accountant here's an accountant you want to be a nurse you go over here right and we were going to pair everybody up and i said nah we're not going to do that and now that I'm saying it, when Brandy hears this, she's going to be mad because we're going to have to do this again because we haven't done it. And I keep saying we're going to and we don't. But right. we just let everybody go. They came in on a Thursday night. There were, I think, nine girls and three boys. Everybody in the room had to give a speech, which nobody likes to do. No yeah. one does. But everybody had to tell them who they were and why they were there. And then we just turned everybody loose. And then at the end of the night, we had everybody, we had nine kids get jobs that night. That's cool. And one of the people who works for FL Crane, which is one of the companies that's expanding and and Mm -hmm. doing some business in in our North Industrial Park, he was a student from, I can't remember his name, can see his face. He was a student from Biloxi High School. And he said, when I was going around kind of checking how everybody was doing he said man we didn't have anything like this when i was in school and i wasn't in school that long ago mm-hmm. yeah. i said i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the mic when we kind of finish up mm-hmm. and he thanked all those kids for taking the chance and not going to the movie that night taking a chance on coming out and seeing what this could be and those kids were prepared because of miss gracie they had their resumes they were dressed appropriately they were they were game on yeah you know which is the businesses weren't expecting the businesses were game on because when they saw that the kids were so excited, they were like, I, I can't, I got to take advantage of this opportunity. So, um, and then he thanked, he thanked everybody in the room for what they were doing to help these kids. Then another, a lady from an accounting office said, my son would never did well in school. Now he's decided he wants to be a doctor. If he'd had an opportunity like this. So we, we, it started being like, you know everybody was talking about stories of people that they knew that had gone down a path that they didn't want to be on right yeah. that if they just had an opportunity they would have had a better result and that's i think we owe that to people i agree it doesn't cost a lot of money Mm-mm. it's all about connecting the people because no matter what business comes here they don't operate on 100 percent robotics no and and won't for a long long time i mean there's going to be certain industries that are going to get affected quicker i'm sure but that you're always going to have to have some human doing something period so um so let's let's talk about some some cool things outside of the kids sure and the the veterans and the school teachers that we're working on so we've got some uh i just mentioned fl crane they're building a sixty thousand square foot facility they're our first tenant in the north harrison industrial park so we're really proud of them our second tenant in uh we're doing we're doing two solar farms and we always call things nice. projects before they really you know to kind of keep everybody's anonymity right so we had project batman nice and project robin okay can you guess what both of those things are no solar farms okay mm-hmm. so one is in Socher. okay and i just had dinners with dinner with those guys um friday night and the other is in gulfport um right kind of next to my office so those will be two very large solar farms there's still a lot of work to do a lot of really complicated stuff that Mm -hmm. we don't have time to get into right but we you know they're coming and buying land and and bringing investment and bringing new technology to mississippi yeah job opportunities tax revenue and one of them will be visible from the 
from the interstate. So as people drive That's through, cool. they'll be like, whoa, because I've heard all these stories about people driving to Disney World. And they're like, man, I can't believe how many solar farms. You start talking about solar farms and everybody's seen a solar farm lately, you right. know, so we, we want to be in that game. Yeah. You know, um, so those are coming up. We've got um, Project Wahoo, which is a, a seaway project. We're working a lot with with uh, Monty at USM and the Blue Economy and taking advantage of our our water and our ability to to boost the economy with these shipbuilding and and other things that that our our people know how to do and have done for a long time and do very very well. Yeah. So that's another project we just signed a contract for actually gets approved on Tuesday. Um, they're they're going to do a big facility on the seaway. Um, we have Friday. I got this real. It's not a big deal. It's it's a big deal to me, but it's called Project Sunshine. And mm-hmm. if I get it, well, when I get it, everybody's going to know about it. It's going to be freaking cool. Okay. So, you can't um, give us the details on that yet, though? No, no, not yet. All right, you got to shoot Top some secret. messages. I, yeah, I got the email. I was like, what? And then I when, called when's them. The, and, when's the timetable on finding uh, out about that? I don't that? know. Hopefully next week. Okay. I'm, shoot I'm, us a message and let us I, know. My yeah. deadline's to turn it in by Friday. And, okay. but then I don't know how long it's going to take them to respond, but, and it's, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's, it's kind of not that big a deal, but yeah. it's a big deal. Okay. So, and I'm excited about it. So, um, the other thing we're doing is we're bringing, um, we're bringing rail back to the seaway. So that's been broken for four years. Yeah. So we've partnered with Mississippi export rail out of, uh, Moss point. They'll run the trains because I don't know how to drive a train yet. No but there's another career opportunity for there kids if they want to be a conductor, maintenance, track maintenance, all those things. We want to create our own academy, which scares the railroad. Where's it going to go? Yeah. It'll go from basically the switches behind Home Depot off 49 yep. mm-hmm. and go all the way to the end of Rykold Road. So it's about eight and a half miles of rail. There's a lot of work. There's $6 million worth of deferred maintenance. Ooh. There's a trestle that has to be redone. And so we've got some Restore Act money from BP, and hopefully we'll get some contractors. Awesome. That, that, uh, Is that the one that crosses 49, yeah. the old tracks? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it comes all the way down Seaway. So we've, we've got about 20 businesses that haven't been able to use rail for about four years. So by putting the rail back together, we help everybody in the neighborhood. And they use that rail to get raw materials to their business? Is that? That's what I thought. Yeah. But I thought it was like, you know, 80% raw materials, but it's the flip. It's more, it's more the export. Okay. Okay. It's, it's more, it's like 60% export of the finished product, 40% bringing in the raw materials. But like four out of five recruiting customers that we're talking to mm-hmm. need to have rail. There you so go. if we don't have it, we're not in the game. Yeah. So because all their stuff comes on barges now, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Well, yeah. barge or truck. Yeah. So yeah. so bringing that back is gonna is gonna help the whole neighborhood. And so we're excited about that. And we we the the folks at Mississippi Export Rail. There's a guy over there. Can't remember his name, but you need to get him in here. <laughs> He's the Let strongest. You ever seen that strongest man in the world competition yeah, on yeah, ESPN? Yeah. yeah. He's it. He's okay. in Moss Point, Mississippi. He beat Jarls Erlison or whatever from Sweden. <laughs> yeah. And he looks like he curls like, you know. We'll get in here and see who can do the, those The push-ups. wheels of a rail car. <laughs> we have to a get a bigger guy. table for him. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. So, um, and then we're working on Blue Economy stuff. Um, and Marsha would kill me. I have a great team. I have, I have, I got to name them all. Go ahead. I got Marsha, Brandy, Lori, Michelle, Gia, Don, Ron, Clyde, Steve, Sage, and Derek. I like you brought it on your phone. That's yeah. good. I like so, that. Yeah, I learned that from. So you Kobe. don't get in trouble. Yeah. Well, we usually just forget. <laughs> leave anybody else. Yeah. Like uh, I know there's. I had to write them yeah. all down because I'm yeah. like, you know, because the guys that I named last do the most important stuff, the dirty stuff, and yeah. I don't want to yeah. see it. You know, pictures. Yeah. Um, I'm glad they do what they do, so I don't have to go down in a hole and and yeah. fix something. Um, but Marsha runs this other cool thing that we do, which is also on the cup. It's called the Coastal Partnership. Yeah. And we, um, that's a group of ambassadors. They used to be called the Retiree Partnership, and we rebranded it because they don't really like to be called retiree. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. So I like that coastal better. We don't care where you're from or how old you are. If you want to be on the coast, Bring give it. us a call. Yeah. So, Marsha, if you call the chamber and ask for relocation information, you get routed to Marsha through the Coastal Partnership. Now, this is bringing people to our area. To okay. our area. Okay. So. 
people that are Illinois that want to get out of the snow, they call Marsha. Marsha will bury them with emails and love and hugs and telling them about the area, them about the area, housing, pictures of the beaches, yeah. sunsets, and, and whatever. And and we use we use all these other stories. It's not just us saying it, like Realtor.com and mm-hmm. Nerd Wallet and all the different reports that come out that say that this is an affordable place to live. A hundred dollars yeah. goes more here. This is an affordable beach town. All those things, all that propaganda. Marsha sends out to these hopefully inbound folks and I don't care how old they are yeah if you're retiring or you're a millennial or whatever come on down yeah and so that's another thing that we do that a lot of people don't know so she has a gang that meets once a month of it's probably 30 people Mm -hmm. and they're retired teachers they're they're veterans they're it's a really great dynamic of people from the coast and most of them aren't from here so they make really good ambassadors because yeah. they've been other places and they've realized what a special place this is. So you'll see them at, at the air shows, at Cruising the Coast, at the Biloxi Visitor Center, at the Hancock County Visitor Center. So they're, they're the people that are out there promoting the coast on a completely volunteer basis because they love the coast. And that's uh, coastalrelocation.org. We need to get a group of those in here. Yeah, that's cool. And that website was built by high school kids yeah i'm gonna check that out i want to see to, that to to hopefully attract people to the coast and all our stuff you look at all our websites it doesn't say economic development on it anywhere because everybody talks about that yeah but our where we are is our message so the drone video on the coastal partnership website was taken by Jaden when he was a senior in high school so we we take that and he's got credit on the website for doing that so we take we take those opportunities and let the kids expand on them yeah and we had them build that website to attract people like them not people like me right so you you go out and you take pictures and videos of things that you think are cool not what i think is cool to attract people like you that are young that's That's awesome so that we get that more of that dynamic so I think we got everything on my list. <laughs> yeah, we. But we that, was uh, that was a good list. And we've. Yeah. Uh, I do. Was we do be, a lot of fun things, I, and 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 we we have like we we're gonna come throw axes at a team building exercise because yeah, yeah. we, the the thing about my team, everybody has, has their own. They have a job description, but they also have a superpower. So, they all really work well together. They pitch in really well, and and I'm really proud. I've I've got the best team that I think's ever been on the ground in Harrison County. So, and most of them aren't from here. So when we we get up against, you know, whatever obstacle it is, we find a way to to Figure persevere. And and we've the structure of our organization is we have a 12 member commission. Each member is appointed one by each mayor one by each board of supervisor and two by the governor and then anything we do that's twenty five thousand dollars plus or minus we get approved by the board of supervisors so we have we have a little bit more structure and procedure than a lot of places do yeah but we um we work really hard together to to move harris not only harrison county but the whole coast forward i talk to george and jackson county regularly i talk to bill in hancock county regularly um so we, you know, we all, because if, if something lands here, it helps everybody. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And F.L. Crane came from Ocean Springs. So, or Goche. And it came, and I, and I, I instead of calling George, I didn't call them. They called me. Yeah, well, they may want to relocate, yeah. relocate, you know, inside of the state. Uh, yeah. Really, the coastal so counties I, for I went, their own bit personal reasons. And I went to George face-to-face. I didn't call him or email him. I said, look, man, this is what happened. Right. And I waited until I knew the deal was really happening. And he's like, man, at least they stayed on the coast. Right. Yeah. That's no, right. no harm, no foul. That's right. So I crossed. That one coast thing, right? Yeah, I've crossed over in, in enemy territory um, into Hancock County with permission from Emperor Cork uh-huh. um, to deal with a small business a guy named Matt Crittenden who who's on the news lately. Yeah. He's he's doing bourbon. Great guy. Great small business. Great he's, story. He's on the hit list. Somebody yeah. want to get in here yeah. for sure. So. And then I've got, um, I forgot to mention some of my Long Beach gang. I've got Edrington Landscape has expanded in Long Beach. We haven't had any expansions in Long Beach in about 10 years. We've got um, Long Beach Custom Boats. They'd be another cool. Yes. It's cool. Robert. He builds, um, he builds really cool skiffs, basically, for Mississippi State, DMR, 
he's got three employees and he's just a he's a great guy and he does cool things so yeah. there's a lot going on around here that people like you mentioned yeah. when we yeah. started this that they don't know i don't know and that's yeah. what we want to do is highlight that and i really appreciate you guys doing this this level of outreach because it's more it's more what's on the street yep. that's important right. than what you know because everybody thinks about us as tourism and casinos and which is very important it is yeah. that's what but I mean, there's I was, an awful lot more going on around here than just and and what what you guys are doing in the classroom is i mean that's that's where that's where the real opportunity lies is planting the seeds with these students to make sure they stay home and do what they want to do right and do it for us instead of doing it for Tennessee or right. Florida or somebody else. I totally agree, man. I knew this was going to be a good one, Bill. I'm super glad you reached out to us. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate you taking your time uh, on the weekend to come in here and talk to us. Doing a lot of cool stuff, man. And uh, you, you keep us uh, notified. We can do more of these and talk about sure. all the stuff that you got going on. Yeah. Parents, if you want to get your kid involved, reach out to start at the school, start with the CTE programs, yeah. right? Reach out and see if, you, if you're in Harrison County. Uh, like you mentioned, there's probably stuff going on in Jackson County as well. There are different programs they have as, as well right. so get the kids involved thank y'all so much for uh watching thank y'all so much for listening and we'll see you on the next one